In this problem, a farmer is using a one-foot diameter well to irrigate a field. Before the well's pump is activated, the piezometric surface of the water in the irrigation well is 20 feet below the ground surface. After the pump reaches equilibrium at a flow rate of 0.5 cubic feet per second, the drawdowns in each of the wells are given as follows. The irrigation well drawdown is 10 feet, the observation well number one drawdown is 9.6 feet, and the observation well number two drawdown is 7.5 feet. What is the transmissivity in square feet per second of the confined aquifer? So we can start this problem by searching in the manual for the word transmissivity. The second instance of this word will take you to page 419 for the section on confined aquifers. This is the section we want since we can see that we have a confined aquifer in this problem. The equation that transmissivity is in here is the uniform flow or theum equation. Let's write it out. The theum equation or the uniform flow equation is given as Q equals 2 pi t times the quantity of H2 minus H1 over the natural log of R2 over R1. T is going to be equal to the transmissivity, which is also equal to K times B, where B is the thickness of the confined aquifer and K is the permeability of the confined aquifer. H1 and H2 are the heights of the piezometric surface above the bottom of the aquifer, and R1 and R2 are the radii from the pumping well. Note that both terms H1 and H2 are noted to be the heights of the piezometric surface above the bottom of the aquifer. However, our problem only provides us with the drawdowns of the wells after pumping begins. So our first step will be to calculate H1 and H2. The problem mentions that the irrigation well has a piezometric surface of 20 feet below the ground surface before the pump turns on. We can use this number to establish our reference point or our datum. It also mentions that the irrigation well has a drawdown of 10 feet after the pump turns on, but this is not needed for our calculations. However, we can quickly do this to help show the cone of depression that forms when the well is pumping. You wouldn't need to do it on the exam to solve this problem. To find our datum or our reference point first, we have to sum up the 35 feet from the impermeable layer plus the five feet from the confined aquifer. Then we have to subtract the piezometric surface of the water in the irrigation well before the pump is turned on. That will be the initial depth of water in the well. Now that we have our datum or our reference point from the ground up, we can subtract the given drawdowns provided for each observation well to find the heights of the piezometric surface above the ground. Once these values are found, we have all of the information we need to solve for transmissivity in the theme equation. The h value or height of the irrigation well, which we don't need but can calculate, will be the 20 foot reference point minus the 10 foot drawdown, giving us an h of 10 feet. h1, or the height of the water in the nearest observation well, observation well 1, after pumping begins, is going to be found by taking our reference point of 20 feet and subtracting the 9.6 foot drawdown from it, giving us 10.4 feet. Similarly, the height of the observation well 2 after pumping begins is going to be the 20 foot reference point minus the 7.5 foot drawdown, giving us 12.5 feet. Once these values are found, we have all of the information we need to solve for transmissivity in the theme equation.
Filling in our terms, we can see that Q equals 0 0.5 cubic feet per second equals 2 pi times T, which is what we're solving for. H2 will be 12.5, H1 is 10.4, over radius 2 equal to 87 feet, and radius 1 equal to 37 feet. And we can see that our final answer for transmissivity is equal to 0 0.032 square feet per second. In summary, this question requires the following. Knowing to use the theme equation for confined aquifers, understanding that drawdown values are not terms H1 and H2 directly, but that they can be used to solve for those terms. And we also have to not mix up our H1 and H2 or our R1 and R2 terms. If you can do those things, you should be able to solve this problem.